It is uh, really my great pleasure to introduce uh, Gianni Sakharakis uh, as uh, the, the, the speaker. And Gianni's uh, work uh, as a principal investigator at the Institute of Electronic Structure and Laser of the Foundation for Research and Technology in Crete. And he is um, particularly leading uh, the laboratory for biophotonics and molecular imaging. And, uh, the, I think that uh, most of you know that uh, the Crete School has got uh, an international reputation in the field of uh, biophotonics and uh, optical imaging. Along, uh, let's say, uh, this, uh, you know, just to remind some other names beside uh, Giannis, uh, you know, Vasilis Santiacristos uh, and others come from, uh, 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 from, from this uh, school. So we are very pleased today to have uh, Gianni here. Gianni has received his uh, BSc in physics in 1997 and his PhD in 2002 from the University of Crete. Then uh, he did his uh, postdoctoral uh, stint at uh, the Howard University uh, at the Department of Radiology from uh, 2004 to 2005. The main field of interest deal with, uh, of course, biophotonics, uh, biomedical and optical imaging, with a specific focus on the development of new tools and the key enabling technology for imaging biological processes in living systems. Janis has been very active also in the uh, European Society of Molecular Imaging. He served in the Council for two rounds and uh, he uh, became president of the society in 2019-2020. Uh, so uh, I think that, uh, you know, the work carried out in, uh, in his lab, in his institution, is uh, very important for the, the imaging field. And therefore, uh, you know, I do hope that, uh, uh, let's say, they will have a chance also to enter more directly as uh, in the, let's say, in the network of uh, uh, Eurobio imaging. I know that Janice is well tuned in this direction. And we do hope to have uh, Greece, uh, possibly soon, you know, as one of the countries that enter in, in the research infrastructure, Eric. So, Gianni, the floor is yours. Thank you, Silvio, for a very kind introduction and uh, for reminding me of the great time that uh, uh, we used to have with, uh, you know, during the uh, the summer schools in, uh, in Crete. Uh, these were really exceptional times. Uh, and uh, hopefully we will be able to, uh, you know, to do it again and organize it again and uh, welcome you all uh, in Crete. Uh, a lot of, uh, <clears throat> as you said, a lot of uh, uh, great uh, science, but also great friendship uh, has jumped out from uh, from those uh, meetings uh, here. Uh, so I'll in in, in this uh, talk, uh, which I'm really pleased to to give, and thank you for the uh, the kind invitation to to give me the opportunity to present you uh, some of the work that uh, we're doing in um, in my lab. Uh, but also say a few things on uh, on bioimaging GR, uh, the the national uh, project for for creating this uh, uh, let's say uh, joined uh, infrastructure uh, facility in uh, in the whole of uh, the country. Uh, <clears throat> so my my talk is uh, focused uh, on uh, what we do in the, in the lab. Uh, in the Laboratory for Biophotonics and Molecular Imaging, as uh, Silvio said, uh, of the Institute of Electronic Structure and Laser uh, here in, uh, in Crete. Um, mainly in uh, developing uh, the tools and the methods to, to see within uh, complex biological systems with light, 
so trying to overcome uh, limits and, and uh, you know problems that uh, the use of light in uh, in tissue uh, imposes. Uh, so for you that uh, you don't know where, where we are located, uh, the institute, let me put my, uh, where is the pointer? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the Foundation for Research Technology, Hellas, and uh, also the institute is located in the island of Crete, just outside uh, the city of uh, uh, Iraklio, uh, right here. Uh, but uh, fourth is uh, distributed around Greece. It has uh, institutes around uh, in different cities. Uh, but the main campus is uh, is here, and um, you know the different institutes uh, focus on on different uh, uh, fields, uh, from uh, physics to biology to uh, to computer science to chemical engineering uh, to social sciences uh, and so on. Uh, we are located in uh, in the main campus. Uh, in Iraklio. Uh, and just to give you some uh, idea of uh, what uh, uh, we are doing, uh, as I said, we are trying to develop uh, methods and, and, and systems that uh, can give us uh, a better insight using light uh, within complex biological systems. Um, and uh, this I, I get some very, very nice uh, talking from somewhere. So some noises. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, I was. Uh, yeah, too. I don't know which is the origin. Anyway. Yeah, no. Now it's now it's better. Now it's better. Now it's better. Yeah, it was distracting. Uh, so ranging uh, throughout the uh, the scales uh, of uh, of biological imaging. Uh, from going from microscopy or uh, high resolution microscopy to whole animal imaging. And some of the first uh, uh, systems that we have developed uh, together with uh, uh, Vasilis Diachristos, as uh, Silvio said uh, back in those times, uh, more than 15 years ago, uh, and Jorge Ripoll was the fluorescence molecular tomography uh, to, to see in, in a tomographic manner uh, within uh, small animals. Uh, fluorescence activity in different biological processes or diseases. Uh, again, together uh, and combined with uh, anatomical information uh, coming from X-ray CT. And these are systems that are now uh, installed in, uh, in the lab and, and run as facilities uh, for the biologists. Then going to, to the other side with uh, uh, 3D in vivo microscopy and things that we have developed also in-house. Uh, with, uh, let's say, advanced light sheet uh, fluorescence microscopy, uh, giving us the opportunity to see not only in, in uh, the usual transparent or cleared uh, samples like uh, C. elegans or, or cleared tissue, uh, but also uh, in uh, more opaque, let's say, more uh, non-transparent samples uh, like the uh, uh, cancer spheroids or organoids, uh, that uh, cannot be imaged with uh, traditional microscopy in high resolution. And this is where we, we try to, to bring uh, some of the uh, physics and engineering knowledge into improving uh, the microscopes uh, and the, 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 the capabilities of our microscopes. Of course, these come together with uh, advanced computational models. Uh, so you, you develop the systems and uh, also develop the computational models. Uh, both for dealing with light propagation uh, through uh, complex media, through tissue, uh, but also for image reconstruction or registration, fusion and correction where it is needed, uh, either in, in fluorescence tomography or in microscopy where you need to, uh, to co-register things, as uh, we will see uh, later on. Uh, and this comes uh, in, uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, realistic digital and 3D printed phantoms. Uh, using and taking advantage of uh, anatomical information from MRI and X-ray CT uh, to build uh, digital phantoms that we can use uh, uh, in our models in, in, in the computer in silico, uh, but also printing them uh, in uh, with uh, you know the, the very modern additive manufacturing or 3D printing uh, methods to, to to have actual. Uh, realistic phantoms uh, to test our uh, our systems, and in this case, you can see uh, a phantom that uh, has uh, the anatomy of a mouse uh, head with uh, the skin, the, the skull, and the brain. Just for 
uh, as an example of, of, uh, uh, of a complicated, complex uh, fandom. Uh, lately, the last, uh, let's say, uh, five years, uh, we moved also into uh, using the, uh, the new method, uh, the new trendy method, let's say, of the acoustic uh, imaging. Uh, and we have combined it uh, in a hybrid confocal of the acoustic and optical microscopy uh, system, uh, which we have used in different applications, uh, ranging from uh, ocular imaging to, to plant biology, uh, to cancer, uh, to uh, imaging in, in, uh, uh, with, uh, in, in aquaculture uh, fish, uh, to also cultural heritage. Uh, which was uh, one of, uh, let's say, uh, the fields that uh, we are happy here to, to, to pioneer. So applying optoacoustic uh, microscopy imaging to see within uh, artifacts uh, of uh, cultural importance. Uh, and of course, since we are uh, a group of physicists and, and uh, engineers and uh, mathematicians, we always like to, to play with, uh, um, let's say, new ideas and new methods. Uh, and this is where we, we started to play with uh, what is called the adaptive way from shaping. Uh, so trying to manipulate uh, light before it enters the uh, enters tissue or any complex uh, medium uh, in order to uh, get better imaging, to focus uh, light within tissue or to, to get a, a much better and more um, uh, an image with a high, higher resolution. And you can see here in this uh, video uh, how uh, this is, uh, is performed. So you get a very random pattern uh, as light propagates through a scattering medium, but then you are able to, uh, to focus in, uh, you know, all the bring all the energy in one uh, focal point and, and, and increase your, uh, your signal. And I, as I will show later on, we have used this to, to improve also the, the light sheet uh, fluorescence microscopy system uh, by uh, an order of magnitude. Uh, now to put into perspective where we are in terms of, um, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the total biomedical imaging field. Uh, and this is a, a slide uh, uh, courtesy of uh, uh, my good friend and colleague, Brian Pogue. Uh, so this is the whole electromagnetic spectrum uh, of uh, you know, electromagnetic radiation uh, with the three, let's say, uh, biological windows where you, you, you have some uh, ability to see within, um, uh, within tissue, within human body. And we are in this very small, uh, let's say, region uh, using optical wavelengths, uh, optical and, and, and near infrared wavelengths. Um, that give us some advantages, but also have some uh, very serious disadvantages, adva disadvantages uh, in terms of how light propagates within tissue. Uh, if you put it uh, in, a, in a timeline, then this is adopted from uh, uh, this nature paper from uh, Weiss, Leder, and Pictet. Uh, having all the, the, uh, the biomedical imaging uh, modalities and images that you can uh, get from this, starting from, let's say, 100, more than 100 years ago uh, with the first X-ray image, uh, going into uh, the more recent, uh, so fluorescence tomography is somewhere around here in the two, early 2000s, uh, but then moving on to, uh, let's say, the more uh, uh, sophisticated and more uh, modern systems uh, and methods that uh, can give you uh, high resolution, but also super resolution, as it's called um, uh, microscopy uh, with palm storm instead, let's say very, very recently, uh, but also all the, the optoacoustic uh, microscopy uh, systems and also the, the hybrid systems that combine different uh, modalities to give you uh, complementary information. Uh, so a, a very big, let's say, uh, milestone there was uh, the, the invention of nanoscopy and the, um, the awarding of uh, the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2014 uh, to Eric Bedzik, Stefan Hell, and William Murner for uh, basically overcoming one of the uh, really most fundamental uh, limits of, uh, of microscopy uh, that was put more than 150 years ago and being able, uh, you know, allowing us to uh, to see with uh, 
unprecedented uh, resolutions within uh, cells and within subcellular uh, structure. Uh, so to put it in a, in a perspective, uh, in um, uh, you know, this graph that where you have uh, resolutions across uh, the, the different axes, so axial and, and lateral, of different modern, let's say, um, microscopy uh, methods, starting from confocal uh, to some of the structural illumination microscopy systems, the lattice slide sheet, uh, and so on, uh, and the, the super resolution, really super resolution methods, Stead and, and, and Palmstorm. Uh, what uh, uh, research has, uh, has achieved is uh, to, to reach um, resolutions using light of one nanometer which is something completely um, uh, mind-blowing. Uh, a few years ago, it was uh, almost uh, uh, science fiction. Uh, but of course, now is a reality. This is, this is the absolute li limit right now of uh, having uh, isotropic resolution of one nanometer using light, which is really uh, something that uh, is, is very, it looks very strange, but with uh, uh, you know, this complex optics and, and computational method, methods uh, also, with complex chemistry and biochemistry, this is something that uh, can be achieved. Of course, this uh, comes uh, with, uh, with some limits. So you can achieve this uh, resolution uh, in, uh, in very shallow depths. Uh, and this is because light, as it propagates through tissue, it gets scattered, it gets diffused, uh, and basically it blurs uh, the images. So if you are in a very uh, shallow depth or in... Uh, uh, systems that have no uh, absorption, where you have ballistic propagation, as you see here, a laser beam uh, propagating uh, through, uh, through water, uh, then you get high resolution images. Uh, this is an image uh, taken with a, a light sheet microscope uh, of C. elegans, and you can see uh, very nice, uh, nicely structures within, uh, within its cells. Uh, as you move uh, to highly scattering uh, systems or uh, deeper in um, uh, in tissue and uh, scattering starts to, to, to play its, uh, its role. Uh, you see that the straight propagation, this ballistic propagation uh, alters uh, and this affects the image. So in, in this cancer spheroids, uh, you, you are able throughout the volume uh, with sophisticated microscopy to get single cell resolution, but not, uh, not better. And of course, when you go to, to, to highly scattering meth, uh, systems or in, in whole body, in small animals, uh, what you get is basically very low resolution images, these blobs. Uh, and this is a subcutaneous tumor um, uh, in a, in a, uh, on, on, on the back of a mouse. Uh, the colored image is the fluorescence and the, the gray is the anatomy, but still you, you, you get a very blurry um, uh, image. Uh, so resolution uh, only in the order of a millimeter or half millimeter at, uh, at the best. Uh, so a lot of methods have been uh, uh, developed to overcome this, uh, basically overcome this scattering. And uh, the most uh, widely used now and uh, uh, method that has uh, give really has uh, shown to be very effective in, uh, in getting high resolution uh, images uh, in, in, in large specimens is optical clearing. So with this optical clearing, you're trying to um, to uh, compensate for scattering by uh, rendering tissue into a transparent uh, material. Uh, in this example, you see an excised uh, 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 mouse brain uh, intact. Uh, so this is when it's still scattering and after optical clearing. And you can see how uh, much better uh, imaging you can, you can achieve since you have really... Uh, uh, minimized uh, diffusion of light. Of course, this means that um, uh, tissue is, is destroyed. So uh, this is not, these are not uh, live samples, these are fixed samples. So in order to get this, you need to destroy um, uh, your living samples. Uh, and this is something that we uh, experience in all uh, imaging methods using light. And this is uh, as a, 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 a plot that I've uh, adapted from uh, this paper from uh, Vasilis Diachristos, where you see uh, resolutions versus penetration depth uh, with all imaging methods. 
So going from fluorescence, my uh, uh, molecular tomography, uh, multispectral acoustic tomography down to uh, microscopy, uh, photoacoustic microscopy, two photon confocal, uh, and and so on. So when you want to uh, to increase your resolution, what you have to sacrifice is the penetration depth. So you get very high resolution images when you are uh, at very uh, shallow depths. But as you go uh, deeper in depth, then your resolution is um, is reduced. Uh, so ideally, uh, an imaging, an ideal imaging system uh, would uh, perform in this way. So it's maintaining the resolution throughout the penetration depth. But this is still something that uh, uh, is uh, in the order in, in, in the, the realm of uh, science fiction. Uh, so ten transforming three paths, map three transforming three paths uh, means something like uh, ten millimeters or so. Uh, so uh, this is still science fiction, but we're trying to to, to work towards that. And some of the uh, of the tools and uh, you know the weapons that uh, we have developed here in the lab to uh, to fight this this enemy the, uh, and and overcome this depth uh, to resolution uh, limit uh, is to try to combine uh, methods, but also create new methods uh, that will allow us to. Um, uh, to improve the, the performance of our system. One of the, one of the methods that we, and the system that we have uh, created is to combine an optical projection tomography system with a light sheet fluorescence microscopy system. Uh, so in, in, in simple words, uh, we have implemented a, a, a multi-angle um, uh, capability uh, in a... Uh, in a light sheet fluorescence microscopy system. So we can take a full um, uh, light sheet fluorescence microscopy scans uh, at different uh, angles. So uh, depending on the resolution that we want to achieve or the type of sample, uh, we can have uh, a full scan every uh, half, uh, one degree or uh, 90 degrees or so. Or, or so. It, it depends on, on, on the requirements. But this allows us uh, then to get, uh, let's say to combine and co-register the best uh, images from each uh, projection uh, using our mathematical models and create a, a fused, let's say, final image that uh, has a uniform res resolution throughout the, the, uh, the samples. Uh, we've tested it uh, in, uh, let's say, transparent samples like the C. elegans, trying to see uh, how this affects the, uh, the viability and, and, and the let's say the, the, the signals that you get from, uh, from this and compared it to, to a confocal. Uh, and in this case, we saw that uh, not only it gets uh, better, let's say, uh, images, but uh, it also affects less uh, the, uh, uh, the, the sample. So uh, this is the, the, let's say, the, um, the effect that the confocal has on, on the sample. So you get, you know, the photo bleaching because of the uh, prolonged scanning. Uh, but you, you, can, you are able to, uh, to follow the, um, uh, your dynamics uh, with uh, the light sheet uh, with no effect. Also, uh, here, as you see, the, um, uh, as you, as you increase the number of scans, uh, this is how the, the signal drops with confocal, uh, but with, um, uh, with the light sheet, the multi angle light sheet, uh, it stays uh, most constant. So you have less effect on, uh, on the sample even if uh, you do this uh, complex uh, uh, acquisition uh, protocol. Uh, but the main uh, target of, uh, uh, of creating this, uh, this uh, system uh, was to, to image in, in more opaque uh, samples, more, uh, let's say, non-transparent samples. And we've, we've done a lot of studies with uh, these uh, cancer cell spheroids, uh, which range from, let's say, two to 300 micrometers up to 1.2 millimeters, and they are really quite opaque. So uh, they cannot be imaged in a confocal or a, or a, uh, a regular microscope, fluorescence microscope, uh, but also they cannot be imaged in, in high resolution, in let's say in um, uniform resolution uh, in, a, uh, in the normal light sheet fluorescence microscope. So with, uh, the, in the images that uh, you will see uh, here and also in the, ne the next slides, uh, we have <clears throat> uh, done uh, four full uh, light sheet scans 
uh, at uh, 90 degrees, uh, let's say distance, so 0, 90, 180, and 270. Uh, and then we run uh, some uh, fusion uh, co-registration of, uh, of these uh, uh, four scans to create the, the final uh, image. Uh, in this case, you see uh, images uh, from uh, spheroids that are created uh, with the cell lines uh, that are expressing uh, GFP and are treated with uh, doxorubicin uh, to see how, um, uh, how the, the, the drug affects uh, the, the cells. Uh, and red is the, um, um, uh, let's say, the fluorescence from the dead cells uh, that doxorubicin has, uh, has killed. Now, we've done a lot of uh, studies uh, with different, uh, uh, different cell lines, different, uh, using different drugs, uh, using different fluorescent probes to, uh, to see different things. Uh, these are examples that you can see. Uh, so uh, first row, you can see the, um, a control, uh, so non-treated uh, uh, spheroid. Um, green is uh, fluorescence from, um, uh, from a probe, the nu nuclear uh, LCS1. Uh, red is uh, the dead cells uh, stained with drug 7, and this is a merged image. And with different uh, uh, different drugs and different concentrations, you can see the different effects of actually killing uh, uh, cells within the uh, the spheroid, but also being able to uh, to image it in, in in 3D. And of course, then you can go uh, and measure uh, the the effect of each drug and, and draw um, uh, efficacy um, uh, curves and and see what uh, which drug or which combination of drugs. Uh, is more effective. Uh, one very nice uh, example where you can see um, uh, where the the, uh, the high resolution capabilities uh, you know is demonstrated very well is uh, when uh, you use cells that are uh, highly uh, let's say uh, uh, motile, so they 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 start to move away from the main uh, spheroid and try to uh, to invade the, the surrounding medium. Uh, which are basically the cells that are, will leave uh, a main tumor and try to, to invade uh, or uh, surrounding tissue and, and, and create metastasis. Uh, so this is an, one example of a cell uh, moving away. And then when you treat it, uh, so you see around the, the sphere of these spikes of cells moving away. Uh, but when you start treating in this, uh, this go away and the, the spheroid starts to uh, also to, to, um, to have an effect. Uh, one uh, uh, example that uh, we uh, have used, let's say, uh, uh, advanced uh, computational uh, methods to, uh, to improve the, uh, further the imaging of, uh, of, our, uh, of our system or our OPT uh, light sheet fluorescence microscopies uh, with um, uh, uh, phase retrieval tomography, uh, where what we do is, so you see here a spheroid uh, with uh, um, uh, red are uh, some dead cells. Uh, so these are spontaneously, uh, 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 you know, apoptotic cells, but stained with uh, uh, drug seven. Uh, so this is um, um, we 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 image the the cell the the spheroid, uh, take the full uh, let's say um, uh, four. Uh, projection uh, light sheet fluorescence microscopy scan, but then we don't run the whole uh, reconstruction uh, in in real space, but we uh, we run it in in Fourier space. So we try to uh, to 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 get uh, you know the coherent properties, let's say, of uh, of uh, the uh, transmitted light into place of phase, uh, and try to do the reconstruction uh, in a way uh, using uh, maximum index intensity projection autocorrelation of the different projections um, uh, in order to, to be able iteratively to recover the phase information that has um, maintained uh, uh, of, of the light going out uh, yeah. of the image. Uh, and in this, uh, in this way, if, you, if we run the whole reconstruction in, uh, in, in this this space, uh, what we, we are able to do uh, is to get very high resolution single cell uh, reconstruction of, uh, of the dead cells within uh, the spheroid. So this is the, uh, the 3D autocorrelation uh, that we, we run, and this is the, uh, the final reconstruction. Uh, 
Uh, again, here the same uh, thing explained. So uh, this is the standard method. Uh, so if you run the whole uh, reconstruction with the standard uh, OPT back projection algorithm, this is the reconstruction that you that you get. Uh, this is also shown here. So kind of a blurred uh, reconstruction. But if you do it on a phase space, so you do the autocorrelation, uh, you you run the whole reconstruction in in, in phase space with the autocorrelations, uh, and and run the iterative phase retrieval tomography. Uh, this is what you get. So single cells uh, within the spheroid. Again, also here in this image, uh, where uh, color uh, maps depth. Uh, so you see the uh, different projections, 0 and 90 degrees. Uh, this is the standard uh, measurement. And you can see blurred uh, cells when they are on the other side. Uh, but when you run the phase retrieval reconstruction, you recover the uh, the, the cell in, uh, in 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 high resolution. So this is the kind of a, a, of approach that we uh, we're trying to to have. So uh, bring uh, both optics uh, and uh, computational method methods to try and and, and see in within uh, complex systems uh, with uh, better uh, ability, better better capabilities. Uh, of course, to, to, to go one step further and uh, really break the depth to resolution uh, limit, uh, what we're trying to do uh, now lately is to, uh, to implement uh, this uh, dynamic uh, adaptive way from shaping microscopy. Uh, and in this case, what, uh, as I said in the beginning, what you're trying to do uh, is to, to use uh, active elements, so elements that will deform or, or uh, adjust the the wavefront of uh, of light that we we send to our samples uh, and this can be systems uh, like spatial light modulators or deformable mirror, mirrors uh, so deformable mirrors you you may have heard from from astronomy this is what um, the telescopes use uh, to compensate for all uh, the aberrations uh, and uh, you know the uh, all the diffusion that uh, the atmosphere puts uh, creates in in starlight uh, so this is probably the same, um, probably it is the same principle. Uh, so you try to, to, to play with uh, the incident wavefront, so adjust it accordingly uh, in such a way that when it goes through uh, the, uh, your scattering sample uh, or within scatter the scattering sample, it, it focuses in, in one point uh, and it can increase uh, your signal. So, for example, it can increase your fluorescence signal, it can increase your photoacoustic signal, it can increase your Raman signal. Uh, and this is something that we're trying to develop in standalone, uh, um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, as a standalone method uh, uh, in, in the beginning, uh, and then implement it into, into our microscopes. So, this is again uh, what I said uh, before. Uh, so you send light through a scattering medium. What you will see um, um, without this uh, uh, this modification is is this pattern, uh, this diffused pattern, which is called a speckle pattern. So this is exactly what you see when uh, you uh, you shine your laser pointer pointer in the wall. It's this uh, um, interference pattern that you get from uh, uh, from the surface, which is totally random. Uh, but if you run your optimization with uh, the active element with the slm and play with the faces of the wavefront uh, when it goes through the scattering medium uh, instead of getting this uh, uh, very diffuse pattern you get a very nicely focused um, uh, point with all the energy or a very high percentage of the energy uh, focused uh, there so this shows that uh, the signal can be uh, uh, can be increased and you can see here uh, how uh, signal increases as the energy is focused uh, on, on, on one single point that you can control and you can uh, pre-select uh, on, uh, on your image. Uh, so I have two slides which are very technical, but uh, this is, uh, these are slides that uh, show how uh, you, know, you play uh, the, as physicists and engineers. Uh, we play in, in a standalone matter, and then we try to implement this uh, into into our microscopes. Uh, so these are two uh, two different um, uh, approaches that we have uh, um, uh, tried, uh, trying to uh, to enhance, let's say, uh, 
uh, this focusing of, uh, uh, of, of, of our, of our uh, laser beams uh, by counterintuitively. So first of all, you put a scattering medium to uh, diffuse uh, the, the incident light on your samples. Uh, but in that way, uh, you increase, let's say, uh, the possible paths that you, that you can control uh, to, to increase uh, effectively the numerical aperture of your optics. So basically focusing better and uh, having a better image, uh, but also by um, uh, blocking this ballistic, as I said before, the ballistic part of, uh, of, uh, of the transmitted light, and allowing only the highly scattering light to, to, to go through, uh, this improves further your ability to focus. So this is kind of uh, you know, counterintuitive, uh, but this is exactly what uh, uh, we have managed to do uh, by, in this case, playing, as I said, with, uh, uh, with the incident wavefront uh, and taking advantage of the, these uh, very highly diffuse, diffusive paths that allow us to increase the numerical aperture and focus uh, even better. In the other case here, instead of putting um, uh, just a, 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 a block, like a, a round block, you, you use this uh, annular uh, ring uh, filter uh, that uh, can create uh, what is called uh, bezel beams. So bezel beams are uh, what we call non-diffractive beams. So they, they have the property to to self uh, heal when they propagate within scattering uh, medium, uh, and in this case, what you achieve uh, is to uh, to have higher penetration depth, so to have a focused beam uh, deeper in in, uh, in tissue. And this is demonstrated here. So with no filter, this is um, uh, let's say the waist of the beam. Um, so very you can image or focus very shallow, shallowly in a very shallow depth. Uh, but when you play with the parameters of this ring filter, uh, you are able to create a beam that propagates um, uh, several centimeters uh, uh, with the same, let's say, almost the same uh, properties. Uh, and this uh, can help you focus and, and uh, uh, create your, your signal within, uh, you know, higher depths in, inside tissue. Uh, so all these uh, technologies we are now trying to, to implement in our uh, in our microscopes, uh, and one one um, uh, first let's say application that uh, we uh, we try to do is to improve the light sheet fluorescence microscopy uh, system. And in this case, the, the scattering sample that we created was a photonic structure um, made by nonlinear lithography, where you create within a, a glass cover slip. Uh, you create these rods of different refractive index. And these rods uh, with, with, a, with a random, let's say, distribution within the cover slip. But these rods give you a speckle pattern that now has this anisotropy. Uh, so they, are, uh, they have this elongated, uh, uh, let's say, structure. So they, they have this uh, symmetry ac uh, across one, uh, uh, one direction. Uh, and this allows you to create not just a point focus now, but to create a light sheet. And in this case, you can see the light uh, sheet that uh, is created by standard only uh, standard optics, so with, with lenses. And this is the light sheet uh, that we have managed to create uh, with this uh, photonic structure and our active uh, spatial light modulators. So again, you, you put diffusion uh, to create a better uh, optical system. Uh, and this is uh, an example with different uh, uh, colors. So uh, you can use exactly the same uh, system and, and just playing with um, now, let's say, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the software uh, that, and, and, and uh, um, the computational, let's say, input to the, the SLM. Uh, to be able to create the same light sheet at the same position with the same characteristics uh, with different wavelengths. So solving a lot of uh, uh, the, the problems that uh, optics have with uh, achromatic aberrations and, uh, and so on. And we manage also to do it with uh, some biological samples. So, so these are dentinal tubules uh, that have this uh, uh, you know, symmetry, uh, you know, linear symmetry, and where we were able to use 
slices or excised uh, uh, dentinal uh, tissue to, to create light seed. Uh, and lately, what uh, we've managed to do is to uh, further increase the, uh, the capability of, uh, uh, of this approach by playing with uh, uh, how these uh, photonic structures uh, are created. So actually creating uh, much wider angles uh, that we can uh, take advantage of. And uh, uh, basically, if you create wider uh, angles, then you can even further um, uh, improve the the, uh, the characteristics of your light sheet. Uh, so this is the the, the, uh, the images the what we were before in, in in that publication a few years ago. This is um, what uh, is uh, let's say the the current uh, uh, you know other uh, an, another approach in in, in the literature uh, going uh, further in depth. So this was. A very nice, a very nice light sheet, but uh, only 100 micrometers behind the scattering medium, so not really useful in in realistic uh, terms. Uh, this is not as good uh, light sheet, but one millimeter behind. And now with our new uh, scattering media and the new microscope, uh, we are able to um, to have a very uniform light sheet. To see here uh, how the the energy is uh, focused uh, on 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 this uh, line. Uh, and also going very uh, far behind the the, um, uh, the scattering medium, so 35 millimeters behind, basically being able to play uh, in a very large uh, uh, range uh, of distances behind the scattering medium, and and being able to create a realistic uh, light sheet, uh, which we were we were able to uh, to use in imaging C elegance again. Uh, here you see the, the, the fluorescence from from C elegance, different uh, different angles, different projections, and basically, if you compare it with what we were uh, achieving in in the standard uh, light sheet, uh, this is even uh, even better. So this is a close up of uh, what we have achieved. So this is a scattering medium uh, that uh, diffuses light uh, before going into the sample. Uh, this is a path, the arm where we run our optimization algorithms to, to feed on the spatial light modulator. And this is where detection is done in 90 degrees as in, in light sheet uh, microscopy. Uh, another, uh, let's say, tool and, and weapon that uh, we have to, uh, uh, to, to fight our enemy, the depth to resolution ratio, is uh, optoacoustic or photoacoustic microscopy. Uh, and in this case, uh, you take advantage using the optoacoustic microscopy or the optoacoustic uh, phenomenon. Uh, you take advantage of uh, the molecular specificity of uh, light, so you can excite uh, specific absorbers by uh, choosing uh, wisely the, uh, the the excitation light. Uh, but then you take advantage also the propagation of ultrasound that is created by uh, uh, the uh, the pulsed lasers, the pulsed light you you uh, you deposit there. Uh, you take advantage of how ultrasound propagates through tissue, which uh, has uh, orders of magnitude less um, uh, attenuation uh, in inside tissue. So combining these two worlds, uh, you can have a very uh, let's say optical resolution uh, in higher depths. Uh, and this is the system we, we first created uh, a few years ago, five years ago, uh, combining fluorescence, confocal fluorescence uh, with optoacoustic microscopy. And as I said, we've tried it uh, in very different uh, applications. Uh, these are actually our, our, our first uh, images uh, in, in, in plant uh, uh, biology. So these are uh, uh, different uh, plant tissue. Uh, so a rose leaf, uh, a red cabbage, uh, red apple pe peel, and you can see different uh, uh, chromophores, uh, you know, native chromophores of uh, uh, of tissue, of plant tissue. And this is a combined um, uh, image uh, with photoacoustic microscopy and fluorescence. So this is the rose leaf. Uh, this is the uh, the let's say the the the, the arterial network of uh, uh, the vessel network of uh, of the leaf in photoacoustic microscopy, um, and this is the the, uh, the autofluorescence from chlorophyll. 
uh, and this was uh, the, the first publications we did a few years ago, five years ago, and, and got into, uh, into the cover of uh, the Journal of Microscopy. We were very happy uh, to, to achieve that. Uh, then we've tried it in many different uh, applications. One uh, very, uh, uh, let's say, active uh, uh, field now uh, and a very active uh, collaboration with the University Hospital of uh, Heraklion is uh, ocular imaging and trying to see uh, both anatomy, but also uh, trying to, to, to see different uh, pathologies within, uh, within ocular tissue, within, uh, within the eye. Uh, this is in, uh, in animal, uh, excised animal tissue. Uh, it is from, from rabbit eyes, uh, but you can see very nicely the anatomy um, uh, of, uh, uh, of the ciliary body, the iris and the, and the lens. And you can go very uh, in a very uh, high detail, uh, both in photoacoustic microscopy to, to say to get the anatomy, but also in fluorescence to get uh, to get some um, uh, some functional uh, information. Uh, and these are the uh, the fibers, let's say, that accommodate that are uh, you know the muscle fibers that are uh, used to accommodate the lens. Uh, and you know this, the 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 alteration of their Mechanical properties uh, play a role in uh, how uh, we lose our ability to focus uh, as we uh, we age. Uh, this also made it to the cover of the Journal of Biomedical Optics, um, and we were again very happy and very and a, a, a very recent study uh, that we did, uh, trying to uh, to see if we can uh, use this uh, uh, this method to. Uh, um, uh, to image and characterize uh, cancer within within the ocular cavity uh, and identify and uh, you know detect uh, melanoma within uh, within the cavity. So this is a very um, uh, a very difficult situation because uh, this cannot be detected uh, and uh, if uh, a melanoma is uh, growing within your 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 eye, uh, it can be very very um, uh, very bad because uh, melanomas are very uh, uh, metastatic and uh, it goes really undetected uh, and it leads to uh, to high mortality. Uh, so we we tested in excised tissue, of course, in 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 this um, uh, in in the microscope. Uh, we uh, we tested uh, excised tissue, both benign and malignant uh, ocular biopsies, and trying to correlate uh, the the signal that we get from uh, fluorescence from native um, uh, uh, chromophores and of course the the optoacoustic uh, microscopy. And what we've seen is that uh, we get a, a, a positive correlation of uh, uh, the, the the fluorescence and optoacoustic signal in in the benign uh, situation, uh, but a very negative uh, correlation uh, when we have uh, a, a melanoma, uh, and this uh, is something that uh, let's say gives us gives us promise that this method can be uh, can be used in uh, uh, later on in uh, also in uh, in vivo. And we are working uh, through a European project to uh, to develop this this type of systems. Uh, also, just to, to show that uh, the, the, the microscope is capable of uh, uh, doing in vivo imaging, and this is uh, the vasculature of uh, the, the ear of, uh, of a mouse uh, that is placed on the microscope. Uh, so this is the, the vasculature we uh, obtained with photoacoustics. Uh, so the contrast comes from uh, hemoglobin. And uh, again, this is um, the, the autofluorescence signal from uh, native uh, chromophores, uh, elastin collagen, and so on. And this is the merged uh, signal. Uh, so what we we envision, of course, is uh, we we imagine, as I said, to um, uh, somehow um, reach or, or go closer to to where science fiction is. Uh, so uh, back in uh, let's say fifteen or twenty years ago, in this movie, the Minority Report, they they were using um, optical tomography to. Uh, to see the dreams uh, inside the uh, inside the, the, the brains of these oracles, so we're not there yet. Uh, but this is something that we can envision. 
Uh, also in in another uh, uh, movie, the Fantastic Voyage, you had this Strangian uh, uh, submarine going uh, uh, within the vessels and uh, trying to navigate through through the body. So we're not there yet uh, as uh, uh, you know scientific reality. Uh, but what we imagine is uh, that uh, we can uh, create, the, let's say, the um, the situation that there's no limit in what uh, we can observe and nothing to block or blur uh, our sight. Uh, and uh, there's no obstacle to, uh, you know, adapt it from, from uh, this very nice song by John Lennon. So this is the vision of, uh, of, of our lab. Uh, and uh, moving towards that direction, we're trying to uh, uh, create uh, uh, this unified hybrid microscope where we can have a lot of modalities uh, that can give us uh, um, uh, complementary information from from different, uh, uh, let's say, contrast mechanisms. So combining photoacoustic, combining uh, standard fluorescence uh, confocal microscopy, combining two photon and nonlinear microscopy, but also Raman to get some molecular fingerprinting. Uh, together, of course, with the wavefront shaping in order to be able to, 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 to see uh, deeper in tissue and with a uh, higher resolution. Um, and of course, uh, test this uh, with uh, uh, engineered uh, tissues. Um, now, a few words on, on, on bioimaging GR, which is uh, the, the national, let's say, the Greek research, research infrastructure. And this is a, um, uh, a network of uh, uh, facilities that are distributed around Greece. So you can see here the nodes. Uh, so really, uh, on, a, on a national level, uh, it's distributed in uh, also the, the very far uh, edges of, uh, of Greece, which is a very, uh, very um, uh, added, let's say, uh, benefit of, of having these nodes around uh, around Greece and creating uh, value to uh, to the extremes of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Greece. Uh, so it's coordinated by the Foundation for Research and Technology, uh, but there are a lot of uh, different uh, 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 organizations, universities, and research centers uh, that participate. Uh, so both uh, several are in Athens, but uh, also others are in uh, in different uh, cities, as I said. Uh, and the services that uh, they can uh, offer, uh, they range again uh, from high resolution or super resolution microscopy uh, with stent nanoscopy to to whole animal uh, imaging uh, with fluorescence tomography, uh, X-ray CT. Uh, lately, there was uh, also uh, a PET MRI purchase uh, in, in, uh, in force, so this will be also implemented in, uh, into this. Uh, but there are several systems uh, that uh, operate in the different nodes. Uh, most of the systems are not, let's say, uh, uh, duplicated, so uh, you need to to, up, to to go to a different to to the different nodes to uh, have access to different um, uh, to the different systems. Uh, but uh, within the bioimaging GR, we have created uh, a, a unified, uh, let's say, platform uh, to uh, to have access to and apply in uh, uh, in these nodes.